so in today's class we'll be discussing about the types of hormones based on chemical nature okay so the different types of hormones based on chemical nature are they are peptides or uh, peptide or polypeptide or protein hormones so if they are proteinaceous in nature or they are peptides or polypeptides or protein hormones that is the first uh, category of hormones which are either made up of protein peptide or polypeptide the example for them are insulin glucagon hormone pituitary hormones and hypothalamic hormones all of these are proteinaceous in nature or they might be peptides or polypeptides then the second variety of hormones based on their chemical nature is they are steroids so example is cortisol testosterone estradiol and progesterone they are all steroidal hormones so cortisol testosterone estradiol and progesterone okay so they are all the steroidal hormones then iodothyron thyronines thyroid hormones so they are iodothyronines okay so these are the third category of uh, hormones based on chemical nature so that is iodothyronines then amino acid derivatives or we also call it as the uh, amino acid derivatives examples for them are adrenaline noradrenaline so the examples for amino acid derivatives are adrenaline or noradrenaline so they are all the examples for the amino acid type of hormone so derivatives of amino acid type of hormones are adrenaline noradrenaline so the mechanism of hormone action is the next part of it so the previous slide we had studied about uh, the types of hormones based on their chemical nature now the mechanism of hormone actions are hormones produce their effects by binding to the specific proteins okay the hormone receptors which are located in target tissues so the hormones they are going to produce their effects by binding to the specific proteins that is the hormone receptors located in the target tissues okay so the hormones you know that they are secreted by the ductless glands and these uh, hormones which are secreted in very little amount they are going to be uh, effective on the target region so the hormones produce their effects by binding to the specific proteins so there should be receptors for that the hormone receptors which are located in the target tissues so the second part of this hormonal action is the hormone which binds to its specific receptor they form this hormone receptor complex so the hormone binds to a specific protein and they are going to form this uh, which we call it as receptor proteins and they are going to form this hormone receptor complex it leads to biochemical changes in target tissue and regulates and thereby regulates metabolism and physiological functions so it leads to biochemical changes in the target tissue and thereby they are going to regulate metabolism and physiological functions so they are going to bind to the hormone uh, specific uh, protein receptors which we call it as hormone receptor complex now once they have bound and it leads to biochemical changes in the target tissues and thereby they are controlling regulating means controlling the metabolism and physiological functions so this is how the mechanism of hormone action takes place so the hormones produce their effects by binding to the specific proteins which we call it as hormone receptors which are located in the target tissues where the hormone should act that we call it as target tissues and this binding of uh, the hormone to the receptor protein we call it as uh, hormone receptor complex now the hormone receptor complex it leads to a biochemical change in the target tissue and thereby they are regulating the metabolism and physiological functions so they are regulating the metabolism and physiological functions so the mechanism of hormone actions 
So that we'll continue with with detail. See, the hormone receptors are of two types: the membrane-bound receptor and intracellular receptor. So the hormone receptors are of two types. So they are either the membrane-bound receptor, which is on the membrane, or intracellular receptors. That is within the cell, the receptor might be there. So hormones are receptors are of two types: the membrane-bound receptor and intracellular receptors. Uh, so these are the two types of hormone receptors. So first type we'll study about, so the membrane receptor. Some hormones, as an example, the protein hormones, the FSH, that is follicle stimulating hormone, they interact with membrane bound receptors. They do not enter the target cell. It generates second messengers, example, cyclic AMP or calcium ion. It in turn regulates cellular metabolism and causes physiological effects so some of the hormones example the protein hormone or fsh they interact with membrane bound receptors and they do not enter the target cell so they enter the membrane bound receptor so it generates in turn what does this generate so they are going to generate the secondary messengers so with the secondary messengers are like cyclic amp what is amp adenosine monophosphate or calcium ion. So they are going to generate this secondary messengers. So hormone binds to the membrane uh, bound receptors and they do not enter into the target cell. Rather, so once they bind to the membrane bound receptor, so this hormone receptor complex, so they are going to generate a secondary uh, second messengers that is, uh, which is in the form of cyclic adenosine monophosphate or calcium ion. And this in turn regulates the cellular mechanism metabolism and they cause the physiological changes and they cause the physiological effects. So this in turn, regulates the cellular metabolism and they cause this physiological effect so in a simple diagram you can remember this okay so one is a membrane bound receptor we just discussed about the intracellular receptor so membrane bound receptors you can remember by this uh, you can even write the schematics uh, representation like hormone like follicle stimulating hormone they bind to the receptor and they are going to form the hormone receptor complex and they are going to respond by producing the secondary messengers like cyclic adenosine monophosphate or calcium ion in turn they are going to uh, develop this biochemical response and they are going to in turn uh, develop the physiological response like ovarian growth and other things here the physiological response is ovarian growth and the hormone example that we had taken was follicle stimulating hormone <clears throat> now in the intracellular receptors some of the hormones interact with intracellular receptors mostly the nuclear receptors okay so the hormone here they have given the example of a steroidal hormone like estrogen uh, so which iodothyronines they enter into the cell so the cell and in particular they are going to interact with uh, the nuclear receptors mostly it is nuclear receptors so they mostly regulate gene expression or chromosome function so they are going to express the gene expression they are going to control this hormone, uh, they are going to control or regulate the gene expression or chromosome function by the interaction of hormone receptor complex with the genome. What is genome? The sum total of haploid chromosomes, uh, the sum total of genes present in haploid set of chromosomes, we call it as genome. So you should remember the term genome, the sum total of genes the total number of genes present in haploid set of chromosomes, we call it as genome. So next year in uh, the molecular biolysis, biology, that is uh, the molecular basis of inheritance chapter, you are going to study in detail about this particular uh, genome, human genome project and other things we'll be studying about there. 
just remember what is genome the total number of genes present in haploid set of chromosomes we call it as genome now uh, the hormone receptor complex they have formed and they are going to regulate the gene expression okay or chromosome function by the interaction of the hormone receptor complex with the genome so genome you should understand the sum total of genes the total number of genes present in haploid set of chromosomes we call it as genome so the cumulative biochemical actions they result in the physiological and developmental effects so the sum total of all this cumulative biochemical action they result in physiological and developmental effects So in the intracellular receptors, the hormone example like estrogen, they bind to the receptor. So especially the receptor is found on the nucleus. So the hormone receptor complex, they stimulate the genome for the formation of gene expression or uh, the cyto, the chromosomal uh, function. So formation of mRNA, production of protein, and this provides the physiological responses. Example, here estrogen, the tissue growth and differentiation is brought about by this estrogen. So this is how the intracellular receptors are there. So there are two types of receptors. One is the membranal receptors and the another one is the intracellular receptors. So this discussion of it completely winds up with our topic of uh, the chemical coordination and the regulation of it so this chapter it completely completes the discussion of it okay so with this we wind up with our uh, a complete syllabus for this entire year okay you have any doubts or clarification dear students you can just let me know any doubts or clarification